So while installing the air compressor, I realized that the terminals were pretty bad. And the positive one, there's a crack. The negative one's looking pretty rough. Some old wires were added to it for auxiliary lights at one point. So I'm going to take uh, some time today to change the terminals. Uh, the positive one's going to be relatively straightforward because I'm pretty much replacing it like for like. So I got some uh, terminals that are just going to be temporary until I upgrade all the wiring. Uh, so I'll just have to do this safely so they don't end up causing any shorts. Install these. Hopefully I can use the side bolts here to secure the, the other wires instead of having them all relying on the side bolt, which should only be used to hold the battery terminal down to the battery post. So first thing I'm going to do is going to be to just to remove everything and to double check that these slide onto the battery. Nothing worse than uh, modifying your harness than figuring out after that they don't work. So I'll start with the negative. That way I don't have to worry about causing any shorts when uh, wrenching around the positive terminal. I don't have to worry about losing too many things in the radio. It'll be pretty easy to adjust after. So once the terminal's out of the way, double check that the new post will slide on, which it does. And because they're both the same size, that means that the positive will also be correct. Positive in this case is going to be a little more of a hassle. I'm going to have to hold plier, use pliers to hold down the uh, the side of the battery. Uh, this was a temporary setup to just test the air compressor. No time like the present to improve or fix something that you did temporarily in the past. And at the same time, I'll be able to remove the uh, wiring for the auxiliary, auxiliary lights, which are not being used at this time. Just to be certain, I'll double check with the other post. It is a little snug, so the, the positive is a tad bigger on this battery. So I'll have to open this up just a bit, use it on that post. So what I've done in the past is a few times is I'll, I'll put a few wrenches and I'll just try to push against each other just to get it to open up a little bit more. So I'm just squeezing it to, to bend it up. Don't need a lot of extra room, but just enough so that it slides into place a little bit better. Take out the whole bolt. So now this terminal fits on the post, which is great. So now I'm going to loosen the wires off the old one, move them over, and also put this wire under one of the posts. Not sure. It would have been nice if it was a little bit smaller. I'll have to check the garage, see if I've got some smaller ones. So I found some that are going to be just the right size. So I'll remove the ones that I currently have on both the positive and negative, get them ready. And after that, I'll start uh, moving the other cables over. It's always a question of removing the right amount of insulation. In this case, it's not too uh, too critical. I do have a little bit of room to play with. All right, so I've got the tool ready. Well, that didn't work as planned. Try that again. It's definitely not working the way it should. Throw that one out. Start again. So last time the yellow didn't work, so let's go with the blue this time. There, that's nice and taut, not going anywhere. On the negative side, there are two wires for this compressor. One is for the power, and the other one is for the controls. So uh, the reason there's two is uh, if you have a 24 volt system, they, uh, they use the same harness, but they're wired up a little differently. So on this one, of course, uh, it's 12 volts. The negatives are both connected to the same connection point in the system. So I like wrapping it around the other wire just so it doesn't take it caught on anything else. There, there we go. So I'll start, or I'll keep going, I should say, with the one on the positive, seeing as that one's already been cut. I'll leave those wires out for the uh, auxiliary lights. I won't remove them just yet. Who knows what I'll do uh, short term with this vehicle. I just want to make sure that at least my routing for all my cables that are going to be used is appropriate. So depending on how bad these are, I may have to put it up. Oh, not too bad. Sometimes you have to put them back onto the battery to have a little bit of, to be able to torque. In this case, they're being reasonable. So hopefully the, whenever these were installed, they took off the right amount of wire for it to sit correctly under the clamp. We'll see that pretty soon. These are a little dirty. Try to clean them up as best you can. The catches, because of their length, they don't really have the, uh, the luxury of cutting and exposing new wire. So I'll have to make do with this for now. Angle of the connector is of course gonna be dictated by your shortest wire. And in a perfect world, I'd have one attachment point per wire. So that's all I'll do with my uh, 
long-term solution. This is just to uh, make sure that the compressor is usable whenever I need it with the intent of fixing this later this season with, say, I'll be upgrading all the wiring later to take uh, care of a few issues when it comes to voltage losses in the harness. So here, the important thing is to have as little exposed wire as possible. You want that, all those braids under, under the clamp. Pretty clear why it was installed the way it was because there aren't that many options on this vehicle when it comes to space and length of the harness. Try to keep everything in a clean, organized manner. It's far from pretty. Important thing is for it to work until I can make it pretty. I really don't like this. I'm gonna take it apart and redo it. So now the fun of tightening this down and keeping the wire harness where it should be. A bit easier with this gear wrench tool. Make sure that the definitely easier to have this one tightened down first than do the final torquing on this side because wires going into it are nice and tight. So it's definitely easier to have this one. Uh, it's, it's tough to have connector under a bolt and tightening it down and tightening it down. So I'm gonna loosen the one side so that I can tighten this one down first. There, that feels pretty good. Take it off the battery post for now while I modify the negative. So the negative has two wires. One goes directly to the ground, to the, to the chassis. The other one goes into the system. So I'm gonna cut them as short or as close as possible, pigtail. That way I'm gonna have the most usable wire after. There we go. This one I can probably remove some of the wire with this, but I gotta be careful because it's definitely bigger than a number 10, so I don't wanna rip or damage any of the uh, strands. So it does feel like it's a bit of a problem. So depending on comfort level, you can either do this with an actual knife or with the pliers like I just did, All right? This one's gonna be a little bit tougher just because of the wire gauge. I'm actually gonna go get a knife. So one of the fun things, of course, is the sheer age of this harness. Cables are a little bit harder. So I didn't nick the wire a little bit, but we'll live with it. So same idea on the other side, we'll loosen the bolts, place the negative on one side. I'll put it on the inside just to have a little bit of symmetry. Loosen the other one out to make sure that I can route these cables through. Install the larger one first, the smaller one above it. Really tell that these haven't been squished previously because they're they're round instead of flat. So that'll quickly change as I start torquing this down. Best not to leave tools on the battery like I'm doing right now because the uh, last thing you want to do is short out the terminal posts. Kind of not uh, fun. So I think we're going to end up with them more side to side than one above the other. Which by the looks of it is probably going to be my best case scenario. I got them to move a little bit. We'll see if they stay in place as I start tightening it down. I'm trying to keep these even. But at the same time, I know that the one with the cable to the compressor is going to be harder to clamp down once there's actually, see there it's starting to torque. So now I pretty much have to focus on this side. That feels pretty good. I wish I had a little bit more of the bottom one in. I'll take the time and I'll back them out, fix that. There like that. Start with this one first, finish with the one without. Still moving a little bit. So we'll start by connecting the positive, then the negative. It's a question of tightening down the two terminals. But I like the way that it feels like it wants to turn on me. So let's see if I can figure out the right size wrench to hold it. Of course it's a half inch and I'm using a half inch. There, that's nice and taut now. Not going anywhere. Let's kite this off before I do something foolish. Nice and tight. So I'll lift it up just enough that I can put the wrench below. I don't know if you can see it, but this one is is twisting a fair bit while I'm torquing it down. So I'm gonna see if I can move it down to the post, see if the post is thicker at the bottom. So yeah, I'm not too pleased with these terminals. Explains why they were inexpensive. They don't fit this battery too, too well. Let's see if there's a way that I can hold on to it on this side so it doesn't torque on me. Shouldn't need this much effort to connect the battery. So yeah, I'm definitely uh, twisting the, the end. So this one was too narrow and this one was too too big. But both were identical, so it just gives you an idea that uh, although the, the difference between the two posts is very minimal, it does add up quickly when you're 
trying to use generic battery posts. So it moves a little bit. So I'll have to either get a, a battery cap, it gives it a little bit more meat, or find uh, the proper terminals sooner than later. So after starting it, I thought maybe, you know, maybe I should use some, some uh, pliers and try to squeeze it at the battery terminal. Do a little bit of the opposite of what I did on the other side and see if I can get it a little close, closer because that would definitely be uh, a better short-term solution. Uh, see, that already feels a lot snugger. Hopefully I didn't damage the thread on the bolt too much when I was torquing it earlier. Seems like I did. So of course I ended up damaging the threads because I was torquing it way too hard. And then I lost the nut under the battery. Instead of fighting with it, this is gonna definitely be a temporary fix officially now. I'm just gonna use the bolts off of the old one, off the old terminal, and see if this can be tightened correctly without it end up ending up with any play. If it does, well, at least it'll, it'll be fine until it's time to actually start using the vehicle. Oh, look at that. That's. That's great, doesn't move at all. All right, well, consider this a success. I'll start the vehicle another time just to make sure. Thanks for watching.